and welcome to Labor Lens, where we bring to you update information in the world of work and pay. I am Sharon Ijasson. This week, we will be focusing on the plight of workers who work here in Osho, the Apapa Expressway. But before we dig deeper, let's take the news. We will be right back. Lagos, like most resilient cities of the world, is a place where abundant resources meet effective resourcefulness. But most importantly, it is a city that never sleeps. Located within the nation's commercial nerve center, Apapa is a town that acts as a major economic gateway and is home to West Africa's biggest seaports, including Nigeria's premier port, the Lagos Port Complex, and the Tinkan Island. With the constant traffic gridlock in Apapa, Lagos, and the alleged death of some workers in the area, I set out to verify what an average worker experienced daily on Apapa Wharf Road. It's 4.30 a.m. and my subject, Ayo Ajayi, a dock worker, lives in Nagbadu Ijayi, an outskirts of Lagos State. I met him at the bus stop of his house. We exchanged pleasantries and then set out for his workplace in Napapa. <laughs> After some minutes, we boarded the bus to Oshodi. <laughs> Normal stress to go through. You told me that you wake up as early as 3:30 a.m. Well, it was not like that before, because a journey of uh, from Kola to Wolf under normal condition is a journey of less than one hour. But you know, when we experience this uh, total blockage within our papa because of the bad road, we are forced to wake up in our houses maybe as early as 3 or 3:30. We we'll make sure that we leave our house around 4 a.m. So to get to work, maybe by 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning. So a journey that's supposed to take us uh, for one hour before, is now three, four, five hours. It was a little tiring. I dozed off a bit, but had to brace up for the long journey ahead. It was a busy morning, although some said, it was a little light. <laughs> At Oshodi Express, I and the crew could not get a direct bus to Apapa Wharf. And it was only a matter of time we realized what was ahead was total roadblock on both sides of the road. <laughs> Finally, we opt into a bus once again. From mile two, the road was blocked, but the driver was able to navigate and drive against traffic. Just before Coconut bus stop, Ayo alighted from the bus because there was no way to go. I took about 10 minutes of his time to survey the area. Because they are not doing the work normal. Where they are, where they are, where they reach there, they will be browsing their phone. Before they, they will allow motor to go inside, we can spend like more than 15 minutes to go into inside. That's why all this traffic is like this. They get all the last man and the police there, they are feel like they are controlling. They are collecting money, putting them one way. You not know, one way they are moving this money. We are here over over getting five days today. Today is five days. This food is not this good. Is my five days. I have been here for the past five days. I have not slept. 
Ayo informed me he had to catch a bike to his office which cost 400 naira as that was the only way to access the port from this point. Yeah, man, yeah, man. A little curious on what the journey will look like, I remember how my day began. From my official car to a bus and now a bike. A bike that has to maneuver in between tankers and trucks. It was quite a stressful and risky adventure. Ayo, who left his house at 4.30 a.m., arrived at his workstation at 9.30 a.m. Coming to a papa is like doing, going to hell. Because I leave my house, I leave my house around 4.30 a.m. See, see the time now. I think the time is 9.30. I get to a papa around 9.30. I'm still going to work and I'll be at my working place till 6 p.m. So, so I don't know. And it's like that every day. We spend more money, we spend more time on the road. So I have to come down on the road and carry Okada. I enter Okada because of the bad road. So we are paying triple of the normal fare, but we are helpless. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. So government will just come to our head and repair the road. I had a chat with Mazili Ifani Edward, president of the Nigerian Port Authority Workers Branch, and he reacted to pending allegations and state of the road in Oshodi Apapa Dual Carriageway. If you are looking at the, the slow pace, of moving of these goods. You will also look at the holding base we have. And you will also look at these trailer drivers, these tanker drivers, these trailers that are on the street, are they supposed to be where they are at that point they are supposed to be there? Are they supposed to be there? Because if you look at the holding bay issue, I, I'm coming to that point. If you look at the holding bay issue, we don't even have, even if we have, it's not enough. That is number one. Then number two, if you say that the pace is slow, then it means that you have to find a place to keep your tankers and keep your trailers until you are sure that these things are cleared. We all know about uh, how network could fluctuate in the country. And so if you put that into consideration, you're supposed to have this clearance a day or two before putting your truck on the road. So if you say because it is slow, then is that enough excuse for somebody to put trucks on the road? And because you know that, the answer is no. And if the roads are terribly bad, then we look to a way to ensure that we do something that will allow space for other vehicles to move. When Ayo finished the day's work, it was 6 p.m. already. I followed him, but this time he went through the water channel. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. Then a bike, and then with the bus back to Agbado Ijai. He did not arrive, his bus stop until 10 15 p.m. in the night. This, according to him, another respondent I met in Oshodi, a papa dual carriageway, is their daily ordeal in a bid to earn a living for themselves and survive in Lagos.